Hey everybody, it's Crypto Anarchist here and I'm bringing you guys another video on cryptocurrencies. So in today's video we're going to be talking about privacy focused cryptocurrencies and why for some privacy focused cryptocurrencies transaction size does not matter. So transaction size is something a lot of people use to determine how many people are using a cryptocurrency and once transaction size really starts to pick up that's when you know a lot of people believe in that cryptocurrency because they're using it uh, not only to trade but to buy and sell things which is the purpose of a cryptocurrency. Um, but there are certain crypto cryptocurrencies where transaction size doesn't matter as much. Now one of them would be Monero. The reason why Monero, like the transaction size on Monero doesn't matter that much is because Monero is completely, like it's completely a privacy based cryptocurrency. So um, there's only certain situations where you need to use private financial transactions and uh, they're relatively few and far in between. So something like Monero doesn't need high transaction size in order to facilitate a large uh, a large uh, total volume or total worth of goods. So Monero could have a very high worth and low transaction volume. Uh, there are certain privacy-centric cryptocurrencies that will probably have a high transaction volume. Things like uh, Zcash or Zcoin will probably have a higher transaction volume. Something like Zcash, maybe not, because Zcoin at least has, or well, actually Zcash and Zcoin both have the public ledger. So ha you need to have a public ledger in order to, like, for high transaction size to be a very good uh, thing to your cryptocurrency. Again, something like Monero, more transactions is a good thing, but it doesn't need them because it's completely a privacy based cryptocurrency. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about a few examples examples of super valuable transactions that you will do maybe a couple of times in your life and you know ones that uh, ones that you don't want to broadcast to everybody over the network so some of these like relationships or transactions that you would have the first one I'm going to talk about is buying a home uh, if you purchase a home, you don't want somebody to know the exact financial details of when you purchase that home. Like, let's say someone figured out exactly how much money you paid for your house. Uh, if they were like an identity thief, then it would be a lot easier for them to steal your identity. So you don't want that. You know, you don't want someone to know how much you paid for your home. And if you have a lot of money and they know you paid for it all up front, they'll know you're pretty well off, and so they might try and steal from you. So you don't want people to know your monetary situation as it relates to your home. It's just weird. It's just weird. Like if somebody asks you how much your home costs, I don't know why you would really tell them. It's just kind of weird. But uh, anyways, when you purchase a home, you know, people don't do this very often. They do it once or twice, you know, or if you're lucky, three times, three or more times in your lifetime, uh, they purchase a home. And, uh, you know, so that's the, the thing about a home is it's a very high value transaction, but it's done very infrequently. So in order to like, let's say if Monero was used to purchase homes. Uh, the thing about Monero is you know the transact, like you have the security of the blockchain without any of the uh, public data of the blockchain basically, that's the way Monero works, so uh, the sender and receiver know that they got the money but that's it, so whoever you pay for the house would know that they got the money, but like that's the only thing that, that's the only record that exists is the sender and the receiver have a record but that's it, so the whole point of this is uh, like Monero would be perfect for purchasing a home because there's no way to trace it, but you can trust Monero. Um, so something like Monero uh, can be used for home purchases. You could use Zcoin as well. I'm not sure if I would use Zcash uh, just because. Uh, well, I'm not as big of a fan of the zero cash or zero cash al algorithm as opposed to zero coin. But you could use any of these, I guess. But uh, Again, if you purchase a home, it's a high-value transaction, and it occurs very infrequently. Another uh, another type of transaction that is very high-value and occurs infrequently, uh, but at a higher frequency than home purchases, are health services. So when you go to the doctor, you don't want people know what you're going or knowing what you're going to the doctor for. Again, like an identity thief, if he knows all your health information, he can steal your identity better. Um, second thing is, is if like it's just weird. Like, why does somebody need to know your health problems? That's weird. Why do they need to know like Let's say you get a hip replacement when you're older. Why does somebody need to know all about your hip replacement and how much money was spent on it? You know, it's just like why do you, why would you want people to know? And I think that's actually illegal. Just so you guys know, I'm pretty sure in the modern health system, like everything has to be private. So if it were pay, like if you were paying for health services with cryptocurrencies, you might be forced to use privacy-centric cryptocurrencies by regulation anyway. But you would want to just because you know that's weird. You don't want people knowing. 
all about your health information and again and again like health stuff that's not something like you you go see a doctor you know maybe a couple times a year not very often unless unless you have a health problem um, but uh, you know these are things you want private they're very high value transactions but they occur infrequently the next thing we're going to talk about is going to church now in your relationship with your church so there's always been a separation of church and state in America for a reason, and the reason is, is like your religion's supposed to be your own, like that's your own thing. Uh, there are rules with how you deal with other people, but you know, your own spiritual relationship with your God, that's your own relationship. There's a couple reasons why you want financial privacy for this. One, churches, a lot of times, as you can see from this picture, a lot of times they have a lot of money. They have a lot of money. You don't want people to know how much money the church has. You know, that's just, that, like, I don't, stealing from a church is a real screwed up thing to do. But, you know, if nobody knows how much money the church has, then there's financial securities. It's a lot better, um, you know. Uh, the other thing is, is it like for people who go to the church, uh, you know, who give money to the church, you don't, like, it'd be much better if people, like, you can have the option where people can know how much money you give to the church. Like, if you want recognition for how much money you give to the church, go for it. There's people who want to give money to a church who don't want recognition. You know, why wouldn't they be allowed that opportunity? Um, obviously, there's a lot of issues with tyrannical governments and different religions, uh, even with atheism in certain points of history but uh, the next thing that you want uh, or I guess if you go to the church example like your church relationship with your church most people go to church once a week you know maybe pay tithes once a week or something like that it's it's an infrequent payment but it, if you know if people are actually giving 10% uh, they're giving quite a bit it's quite a bit uh, so they're giving a lot to their church um, so uh, you know again that's a high-value transaction that doesn't happen very often uh, another high value transaction that doesn't very happen very often is your relationship with your bank. The thing that I've told you guys about the lightning channels, and this works for all cryptocurrencies, um, there will probably be banks for cryptocurrencies just because not everybody wants to actually secure their, their coins themselves. They'd rather have somebody who's trained and you know a professional at that job do it for them. So they probably will have cryptocurrency banks and these banks will probably operate as ways for them to stream money. Um, and again these banks might be completely run by like programs and done by wallet services and run through smart contracts or they might well, even if they're run but through smart contracts, there will be a system administrator. But I'm, I, you know, it might not be the same relationship that you have, you know, with a fiat bank. There not, might not be an actual physical bank. But most people will want actual, you know, banking services for their cryptocurrencies. And so again, if you, the one good thing about cryptocurrencies of all kinds is that they you can use lightning channels of one form or another. So you can have a long running. Um, payment channel with a bank that clears like let's say once a month and so you pay super low fees on all your payments to and from your bank you know that's your pay stubs that's your like payments you make to other people like you can you can cut a lot of costs using a, a cryptocurrency bank and then you can also have the security of knowing that even if you're not a professional with cryptocurrencies the person de like who, who's in charge of your money is a professional so a lot of people will actually want to use this but again you don't want people knowing all your like seeing all your bank records. Uh, if you don't have privacy cryptocurrencies, they see your bank records. So again, this is something privacy cryptocurrencies are needed for, and it's a transaction that occurs very infrequently, and it's a very high value transaction, like your monthly bank transaction. Um, so again, this is another reason why transaction volume doesn't always matter for privacy-centric cryptocurrencies. Uh, the next picture we're going to look at is, you know, your family, like. So let's say you start a family and you've got some young kids. You like I, I don't even know why I would have to bring this up, but you don't want the entire world knowing all the details about your kids, like how much money you spend on different things for your kids, what you spend money on for your kids. Like you know, there's pedophiles out there in the world, everybody, uh just so you know, I don't know why I would have to say that, but uh you don't want pedophiles knowing everything, like every little detail about your kids, knowing that, oh, you bought a soccer jersey for them, so they play soccer somewhere. Um, you know, all these little details. You don't, you don't want them knowing these things. So if you got a family, all your transactions, like things that you do that are related to your family, you want to keep a lot of that private. Um, that's just the way the world works. You want to keep the things that matter to you private, and your family matters to you. So... Uh, again, a lot of these things will be different, uh, um, 
different uh, sort of relationships that we talked about before. So like one big thing that you don't want people knowing about your kids is the hospital visits that they have. Like you don't want them knowing all the financial details of that. You know, like let's say you set up a trust fund for your kid. You don't want people knowing about that. Um, you know, different things like that. You you want privacy on um, relating to your family um, and again these transactions they're infrequent but they're generally big transactions and that's why you don't want people to know all about them so again this is another reason why transaction size doesn't always matter for privacy centric cryptocurrencies at least the transactions done in a private sense um, and again the these privacy centric cryptocurrencies like if they were used for like all these things together you know home purchases hospital visits church payments you know your relationship with your church church donors uh, church funds um, if all your banking relationships were done with privacy cryptocurrency or privacy cryptocurrencies you know all your uh, all your payments on things for your kids, uh, like big important payments that matter that you don't want people to know about, if those were done through privacy-centric cryptocurrencies, the value of privacy-centric cryptocurrencies would skyrocket. Um, but again, these I'm talking about high volume tra or high value transactions and low volume. So there's very few, very infrequent transactions, but they're high value ones. Like when you set up a trust fund for your kid, high value transaction. Uh, but it's just one transaction, you know, or like whatever you're doing with it. Um, so, again, this is uh, this is why I'm a believer in privacy-centric cryptocurrencies. They're just they have a lot of utility to offer, um, and they are actually uh, in some ways insulated from a lot of things from other cryptocurrencies. Again, like cri cryptocurrencies that do both public and private, uh, like Zcoin or you know Zencash or Pivx or Verge, uh, you know, there's a lot of them out there. I know I didn't name all of them. Uh, those ones, uh, transactions volume does matter because they're offering both a public and a private network. But the private network, you know, the transaction volume, it, it does matter to some extent, but not to the same extent that public transaction volume matters because the private transactions are high value transactions that, you know, people just want to keep private and it's infrequent when you actually want to keep transactions private. But, uh, anyways, I'm, I'm going to be coming out with a video later talking about the different privacy protocols in detail uh, like in in much better depth than I've talked about before uh, so I hope you guys will enjoy that I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it explained to you guys why you know certain metrics for different cryptocurrencies don't matter um, this is just one that I wanted to talk about since I'm really interested in privacy centric cryptocurrencies um, but again I'll have more videos coming out hope you enjoyed this one